Boy, when you get started talking on a subject you love, the time just flies by, huh? So, okay, let's, uh, let's keep plowing forward. So, fuel. Now, there's a lot of things you can use as fuel, right? In one case, we had our skateboard rocket, which we were using gold bars as fuel. Not a very cost-effective fuel, but it did, it did work to some extent, right? And now, how far, how fast could we go? Well, that would depend on how many I could, how fast I could throw these things out the back and how many we had. But we, we certainly would not reach orbit. Right now, with gunpowder, we can go farther and faster. So gunpowder somehow is better than gold bars as rocket fuel, right, as a propellant. Then we have other things, right? The Saturn V used a combination of liquid oxygen and kerosene. So how do we measure what fuel works best? Well, first of all, we can't measure fuel by itself. We really have to, any discussion of fuel is related to the motor or the vehicle because it's the whole assembly that gives you the net result of how fast you're going to go. But let me, uh, I think I have some statistics here. The term that's used to, de to uh, evaluate the quality, the, the efficiency, so to speak, effectiveness of a fuel is specific impulse. This is a scientific term. The word specific, whenever you see, and you may have learned this in your science class, that whenever you see the word specific, what it means is per mass. So how much impulse are we getting, how much thrust are we getting per mass of fuel, right? So a, more, a better fuel is one that's going to give us a lot of impulse with not a lot of fuel, right? So that's, that's, that's just a logical way to evaluate what's better, right? A, a better investment that is one that gives you more return for the same principle. A better fuel is one that gives you more impulse for the same amount of mass. And so they call, they, they refer to it as ISP. The units of specific impulse are seconds, which is really just an artifact of the, the non-dimension, the way it's, the way it's uh, calculated as a ratio of impulse to mass flow. I'm not going to get into that detail here, but the units are in seconds. But the, the really thing that matters is just the number. So let's just compare a bunch of different fuels and their specific impulses. I think if I go to darker colors, it's better. Um, Gunpowder. is at 80 seconds. A solid rocket, right, a modern solid rocket is at about 250. Now where do, where do we use modern solid rockets in, in modern rocketry? Well, they're used on, in all, all of our ICBMs are, are done with solids and there's a number of engineering reasons for that. The space shuttle has two solid rocket motors as, as, as additional boost to get off the ground, which actually caused the thing to destruct. That's a very interesting, the, the real story behind how the Challenger blew up. Very interesting story, not, not widely known. I'll, I'll get to that eventually, but the Space Shuttle does. Um, obviously all those Chinese rockets were all solid, but they were gunpowder solid. Uh, and then we have liquid. So. In the domain of liquid rockets, there's all kinds of different possibilities. The first one is so if you want to be a rocket scientist, the first thing you have to do is get familiar with some of the terminology. We already talked about, for example, attitudes of spacecraft, the axes, what have you, locks, liquid oxygen, there, there's a scientific term for you, liquid oxygen and kerosene. That's what was used on the Saturn V. Right, the Saturn V was the rocket that went to the the first one that went to the moon, and then we I think all you know Apollo 11 through 17 all used Saturn Vs. The largest rocket, at least the United States has ever built, eight roughly almost eight million pounds of thrust. That had an ISP of uh, 260. Uh, 
blocks plus high liquid hydrogen, which is used in the space shuttle main engine. SSME, another rocket science term, SS, space shuttle main engine, delivers a million pounds of thrust. It uses liquid oxygen plus liquid hydrogen. So the space shuttle, when you see it on the pad, there's, there's this giant thing in the center, and then the vehicle is strapped to it. This is going to be, this is going to be an extremely crappy drawing. And then there are these two things over here. Right, and these, these things have motors on them. And the space shuttle has a motor on, three motors in the space shuttle main engine. These are solids. This is a hydrogen tank. So all the, all the, you know, the fuel for the shuttle during takeoff comes from this tank. That's where the hydrogen, and I guess, uh, I don't know where they have the oxygen. Maybe it's in the vehicle. That's a, that's a good question. Or maybe it's, maybe they're both in here. Well, anyway, I've seen various numbers for this. I think it's different at sea level versus on average throughout the trajectory. So it's somewhere in the, main, in the range of 400 specific impulse for uh, the space shuttle engines. Now we get, there are other things, other ways to build a rocket using other materials, some of which we have never flown yet. So let's look at some of these just, because maybe in your lifetime you will. In fact, maybe you can spearhead the whole thing. A nuclear. Let's call it nuclear thermal to be specific. So in other case, a, a nuclear reactor that spews reactor product, or that, that uh, uh, no, that spews some other fuel with a solid fuel comes in at 800. That's a pretty substantial increase. Right now, at the end here, I'll talk about what a nuclear rocket looks like. We're not actually, I was mistaken, we're not actually throwing nuclear reactor materials, you know, so-called, you know, fission, frag, fission, fission fragments or whatever out the back. We're just using this to heat the fuel then which goes goes flying out the back. And then there's nuclear liquid, nuclear thermal liquid, which is at 1300. So nuclear has a, you know, a, a tremendous, opportunity. if we can get over the whole, you know, uh, somewhat irrational fear of nuclear anything, there are some pretty substantial opportunities here. And now the last one, our good old jet engine. Now, think about this for a second. We talked previously about what's the difference between a rocket engine and a jet engine. Where's the jet engine gonna go? Is the jet engine gonna go up here? Is it even worse than gunpowder? Or is it, where is it gonna go in the train, in the whole uh, hierarchy? It turns out it goes down here. Three thousand seconds, equivalent specific impulse. Because a jet engine uses oxygen that is free, it's tremendously more efficient than a rocket that has to carry its own oxygen. Okay, so now there's one other thing I want to talk about under the physics category, and then we'll, we'll move forward here. I want to talk about quantities and dimensions and units. You know, people use these terms like power, thrust, impulse, energy, horsepower, force, interchangeably. You know, and you see it in the newspaper that way, you see people talk about it that way. And that is not correct, because each of these terms has a specific meaning. And if you want to be a rocket scientist or an engineer, you need to use the specific term for the specific purpose you're talking about. So let's go through these. Maybe I need another column here for uh, uh, well let's let's do it the other way. Physical term. So thrust, thrust is what we care about with a rocket. Thrust is what makes the thing go. Thrust is a force, right? The force, the same as you have a force 
that makes a propeller-driven airplane go forward, the thrust, in that case it's the force of the propeller, the units of force in the American system are pounds. Now this brings up all kinds of confusion because they say, people, now wait, when I got on the scale to weigh myself, I weigh myself in pounds, isn't that mass? No, that's actually not, that's force. You're measuring weight, which is force in pounds. Thrust is a force that's given in pounds. In the, in the metric system, it's given in newtons. Now, so then you say, well, okay, now wait a second. If pounds is what I'm weighing myself with on the scale, and that's actually force, what is mass, right? So mass, in the American system, well, in the, in the metric system, we know it's kilogram, right? That's a, everyone knows that. But what is mass in the American system? It's a slug. And, a, and actually a force, right, one pound is one slug foot per second squared. So then we have, so thrust, mass, let's talk about, while well, we're at it, acceleration. Because what we have to do is F equals MA, we have to accelerate the A term, that thing going out the back. We have feet per second squared, right, which just, the second squared thing, all it means is that it's feet per second, which is velocity per second. Right, it could be miles per hour per second. Right, maybe that's a more appropriate term because the rocket is actually accelerating pretty darn quickly. And then here would be meters per second squared. Or you could have kilometer per second. Same thing, whatever. So that's acceleration. Now those are the ones we really need to talk about primarily in our discussion of rocket science. The next one is energy. What is energy? Well, energy is an intrinsic property, right? We even have this thing called the, the law of conservation of energy. So energy is an intrinsic property, but what is it? What are the units of energy? It's actually going to be force times distance. So in the English system, it's going to be pound feet. They always put that little dot there for the units, like that pound feet, pound foot. And here it's going to be, uh, it's a Newton meter. So energy is an intrinsic property, but it has those units. It's, energy is a result of having a force that acts over some distance. They also call that work. Let's maybe not get into that complicated terminology at this point. Energy. Then we have power. And what is power? Power is energy per time. And so it's going to have then the units of pound, foot per second, or here it's uh, newton meter per second. So these things are not interchangeable. Each one has a specific meaning, right? Power is essentially the rate of change of energy. Energy is how much force it takes to move something and how far we've moved it. Acceleration is how fast the velocity is changing. Mass is an intrinsic property, and then thrust is the force, which is how much mass can we accelerate. So a pound then, right, so a pound then is equal to a slug foot per second squared, or a newton is equal to a kilogram meter per second squared. So that's how those things all tie out. So try to use the correct term.